Well, welcome to the Goat Shed. This is a follow-up video on our repairs to the game Icarus by the Spanish company Resell. Now, today is Tuesday the 6th of December 2022. It's approximately 21 degrees Celsius outside, which is roughly 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So, once again, these Spanish machines are not for the faint-hearted. If you are a beginner in pinball and you want to learn to fix machines, don't start on one of these. They are different. Even though things look the same, they're not the same. So, we mentioned in our previous video that a lot of the playfield stuff's got lube and some of the stuff underneath, like the got lube style or design of things, but apart from that, then it moves away, and the motorboard, the relays are totally different. Now, we're going to show you the motorboard in a moment with um, what we, we did and a few other things we did, and then we're going to show you the game and some of the troubleshooting we did on it and some of its features or gameplay. It's quite interesting. Um, it's not really an over-exciting game, and it's hard to win on except a replay on high score. Now don't forget to subscribe to our channel and uh, please give us the big thumbs up on our videos. We greatly appreciate that. So just stick around for a, a little bit and we'll show you where we got up to with this. There were some interesting things with it. Well, here we are carrying on with the repair to this Icarus pinball machine, electromechanical game by Resell from 1977. We have the motorboard on the bench and we've been doing a little bit of work on it. And let me assure you that these motorboards are really nothing like a Gottlieb. We discovered at the end of our last video how the score motor is different. Well, we've worked out that it actually swings up. It can swing up and it can come right out. Like that. You can take it out, it just uh, goes in there, and down it goes. There's a little cradle in there, that's how you got that out. There's a split pin goes in the front there. We've got to put that back in. This particular motor had the old story, the armature plate was sticking. That's moving in and out quite freely now. It was barely, it wouldn't return. It's got a spring at the other end here. So that's important that they work properly, just otherwise, if they're not working right, the motor can overrun and throw the switch positions out. We discussed that on another game in a recent video. Now, even the trip bank is totally different. There it is there, we can sort of see that, trip bank. And we've got a pin here, and we can just pull that out, and there's one on the opposite end. And you can swing the trip bank up. And notice that this trip bank has an SB armature switch on it, underneath it. So what we've also found on these, pretty well on every like target bank or any bank with a big reset coil on, the coil stop has been loose at the top. So we've had to tighten those up. So these just swing back down. Clip those back into place. And we're in business. All the relay banks had to come out by removing the brackets. We had to unscrew the brackets here because there's pins in the relays, just like a Gottlieb, but they're next to impossible to get back in. So we had to take this one bracket off here, one bracket here, and you can turn the whole thing over. We repeated it on the same side. Now, lucky we did that, because what that pointed out to us was a couple of bad broken wires. We had a, a broken wire here on this relay, just here. Where was it? That one. That wire just there had broken off. Bit hard to see down there. We've, we've replaced B 
both these fuse holders they were very weak matter of fact when we got the machine this is the 15 amp fuse for the coils it had a trip um circuit breaker trip in it and we removed that and we'll put one back in before we start it just in case it's a bad coil but we're going to follow our philosophy and check every coil before we we put it back into the game or power it up i should say well, we've got a slam switch here normally closed we've cleaned that here's a closer look at the the sound card uh, this became sort of common practice toward the end of the 70s with electromechanical games here's the tilt mech we've also replaced the um, fuse holder there ball tilt that's all bent up I don't think the tilt bob was in this so that's okay it's home use only and the transformer is one of those ones where you can set them for different voltages as you can see 240 220 200 125 and 110 um, this one here we've just got to investigate why all this has been done someone's done something here at some point in time it's probably all okay but we will look into that so this is your motorboard of your Icarus like I said very very different and I will say much more difficult to work on than any other machine that we've encountered we've done a few of these foreign ones Playmatic um, Sigasa or Sigasa however you say it and this is a resell so beware if you get one of these you're in for some fun this is taking a lot longer than it normally would to do uh, um, we've actually pulled one of these apart before and we have some spare relays out of it and we actually had to change the score motor itself in a game here oh, several years ago now so hopefully we don't get a bad one of those because we just haven't got any it'll have to be repaired uh, they can all be repaired we've had quotes to repair motors before not cheap and we've got some plugs here something about extra balls we've got one two three of those so um lots of fun with this game a little bit more work to do on this motorboard before we're happy with it and then we're onto the back box righto so we've reassembled the game and put everything back together and um well started up and uh we should see the reset sequence which i think they start with the player four let's have a look yeah sort of goes backwards okay so that's all reset now some of the problems that we encountered on this machine were you have two lots of drop targets you have this lot here and the lot up the back there now we'll show you how that captive ball thing works in a moment but what we found when we put the machine back together on startup the drop targets all reset but once you got them down in the game we were having some trouble with them resetting and it started off with the ones up in the middle here they call that bank two and they call the one on the left bank one according to the schematic now the schematic is available um, off the IPDB uh, but as I mentioned earlier they're somewhat convoluted and um, maybe a little hard to understand for the anyone beginning um, so when we read the schematic there's a couple of motor switches that are involved in resetting the drop targets and when we inspected those they were not quite right uh, so we adjusted those but it still didn't seem to remedy the problem so after a little bit of mucking around and research what we ended up finding was a very very common problem we probably should have looked earlier on but it was Jones plug related 
So the plugs coming from the play field to the motorboard are very tight and one was sitting up a little bit at one end. Pushing it down remedied that. So that's something to, to bear in mind. Now, another problem that we encountered, and we put this up on our Facebook page, during reset, we noticed the machine was sort of hesitant and all of a, and then all of a sudden it really just locked on and couldn't reset. But the problem was, was the relay bank ladder, the switches had been arcing badly and it's taken out that ladder and it welded the switches together. So fortunately we have some old resell relays here, we were able to change it. These work in a sliding motion, they're a little bit different um, than, than say Gottlieb or anything else for that matter, this is quite unique. It's not a bad idea, um, but um, once again, if you didn't have these parts, we've got plenty of Gottlieb and Williams and Valley parts, we were just fortunate to have these. And I think if anyone's ever looking for one of these, so John Robertson from flippers.com in Canada, they have these in stock. So that's good to know. Now, we mentioned earlier on we changed two fuse holders. That was a necessity. We've adjusted those motor switches associated with those uh, target banks. Um, we had... Uh, what did we have? We had a problem with the knocker. Uh, the plunger was stuck to the rubber. You know, they get all tacky and it actually sort of glued to it. So we removed that and cleaned it up and, and just replaced that. And that's all good. Now, the gameplay. So this is where it gets interesting. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to rise this up a bit so we can see. And I'll get... Um, I'll get Graham to um, illustrate what's going on here. So there's the ball, and here we go. So what we want to show you first up is that this actually, how this extra ball works. Now this is interesting. So to get the extra ball, what you, you need to do, you need to be able to knock out number one over here, and it lights number one up there. Now that's the captive ball. Now you watch what happens when the ball hits it. That's how it works. Now, we've got to try and get it over. Now we'll get that over. We should be able to get that. Now, what's happened, we've now gotten the light on the apron, which says extra ball. So let's drain that. And we're still on ball one. Now, something else we want to show you. You watch that light. We didn't know what that was at first. We actually thought there was something wrong with it. What it is, is to inform you that you cannot get another extra ball, that you've already got one, on that same ball. It's tied up with the extra ball relay, stays engaged, and it won't release till the machine, the ball, goes down the out hole. And how it works, it works off a motor switch called, um, I think it was motor 5A. And it's just one switch on a cam with um, five nodules on it. So that's quite clever. Um, now, we're on ball two now, as you can see. Here you go. Now what we're going to do now, we're going to illustrate how this has specials. Now this is where it gets hard. So... To get specials, what you have to do is as follows. So knock out, say, five, which will light up double bonus. Now, you can only get special when the double bonus is on. That's the only time. The special light is tied up with the double bonus relay. Now, watch what happens. Graham is going to hit the five without the ball in there. And now what's happened is double bonus is lit which is good. Now what he's going to do, he's going to knock down one and three. And, we'll momentarily light that. and this will momentarily light the special, as you can see there, but it goes out. So how on earth do you get it to stay on? 
what you do is this. Now, if he knocks down one and three without knocking down number five, the special is a light. Well, extra ball is on because we've got an extra ball. We're going to roll the ball over the special lane and we're going to get a replay. You heard the knocker. But if you get the five out, you will lose special. Yes, that's right. Did you hear what Graham said? If you accidentally knock the five out, special will go out. So that's the trick of the game. Once you get special, keep away from the captive ball. Yeah, once you get special, keep away from that captive ball area. Okay. So it's, it's sort of interesting. Like, frankly, I, I, it's, a, it's hard to get because you can't, haven't got a lot of control. You know, overall, uh, I'd rate this game very low. It's not, you know, a, a great game. What It came out, I think, in, what did we say, 77. Yeah. I played it new, but it was very hard to understand. Yeah, so, once again, hard to understand for a youngster. Um, so, Resell manufactured a number of machines, and um, I, I guess, you know, some of them were, were good, some of them were bad. Uh, but this is just a slightly different machine. We also noted that you can get a ball re-entry here, through there. But overall, this game's going to play uh, fine for the for the owner. Uh, we've re-rubbered it. We've, the play field has um, mylar on it. Unfortunately, the mylar is lifting in places. We've had to do a few temporary repairs, even cut a little bit away. And wasn't a great mylar job because compared to some of the other games we see where the mylar's been down 40 odd years it's still fine but this one wasn't now the other interesting thing that this game does which is we've not really seen before but on a match what happens is you can only get a match on odd numbers so in other words it will only match on 100 300 500 700 and 900. And in fact, they're the only numbers in the back glass. However, the step unit, which is like an ASFS relay, is still a 10 step unit. So it's possible you won't get a match number alight because it doesn't make a circuit to go there, and it, nor does it match. So that was sort of something a bit unique that we thought of as well. Never seen that before. So, people, that's Icarus. And I guess we'll close off this video now. And this has been another Goatshed presentation. <laughs>